Today, I'm going to walk you through the Pickaxe No-Code Builder, a powerful place to build AI tools. Here in the left-hand panel, we have the actual builder, where you will write the prompt and actually build your tool. Here in the right-hand panel, we have a live preview of the tool, where you can test it out in real time. I'm going to walk through this whole builder piece by piece. So first, we have the role. This is where you put the prompt that actually powers your tool. If you've used ChatGPT, you're familiar with prompts. They're just natural language to describe the instructions you want to give the AI. Here we have some sort of examples that might give you some inspiration about how it will work. But today I'm just going to write my own really quick so you can get a better understanding of it. So I'm just going to paste in a prompt that I'd already written. And the first thing I want to say is you don't have to follow this structure. There are no, there are no rules for this. You can write whatever you want. You could just write, answer the question, and that is a prompt. But here's the prompt I wrote, because I'm going to build a business coach. And it's going to give people advice on their business. So I just wrote a persona. You're a strategy coach. You help people start a business. Your goal is to you know, help iterate on the user's idea. And I give it some rules to use real-world businesses to illustrate a point. So I've written this. I can pick a model really quick if I want. Some of these are locked behind the gold, uh, some are not. Uh, some of them are smarter, faster, bigger context windows. But for now, we're just going to use the basic one, GPT 3.5, which is pretty good. So here we'll just kind of test it. Hey, I want to start a cupcake business. And we're going to see what it says. Now, I haven't even read any of this, but I can already tell this is way too long. So I'm just going to hop back into the left-hand panel and adjust the prompt. I'm going to add a rule that says answer the user very briefly. Be terse and to the point in your responses. Now let's try it again. How about a cupcake business? And here it's way shorter. I could iterate even more to get it closer to what I want, but already this is way better. So now that we've added this, we can go and add knowledge to the bot. So we can upload files if we have some. Here's a guide on how to start a business. And as you can see, it's now adding it to the memory. We can also upload web pages. So here, if I just go to this uh, government site about how to start a business, I can add it here because it has all this information. When I click add page, it's now scraping this and other websites, uh, other pages on the website. And maybe I want to only add a couple of these, right? So I'll click these and then I will add to knowledge base. Great. Now this document and these web pages are in my bot as a knowledge base that it will reference to help answer questions. Down here we can add training dialogue. This is just sort of example questions and answers from your ideal conversation that you can add. This will help the bot understand how you wanted to answer questions. Then down here we have an intro message. So right now it reflects here. Whatever we enter here is what the bot's first uh, message will be to the user. So we can make it something a little bit more instructive. Tell me about your business idea. Let's throw some ideas around. Here, you can allow people to upload their own documents. Notice when I click this, it gives them a little paperclip icon where now end users can upload their own documents to your tool. But you can also add web browsing. So here you could say, hey, search the web and tell me about cupcake businesses in 2024. When you enable web browsing, this will let your tool search the internet and grab information to help inform its responses. And every time it does, you'll know because that little icon comes up. You can also uh, add image generation. And this lets the bot uh, generate images when it senses that the user would like that. Down here, we have some advanced options. We can set a maximum allowed length for the, for the output of the bot. We can limit how many words that the user can enter themselves so that they aren't pasting in you know, essays. You can even adjust memory and all sorts of stuff. But for now, we'll just kind of close this. And if we're happy with this bot, we can then hit next step. Now, we're at a sort of final preview where we can set a little bit more of how our uh, tool will come across and how it will look. So here, we can shuffle through some images, some stock images. We can also add our own if we wanted to. You can also choose the chat icon. Right now, it's, it's the default pickaxe. You can change it to this. You can have no icon. You can even upload your own. 
Here we have placeholder text that appears here. We can say enter text here. This is just the placeholder text that goes in the chat bar. We can even make it empty if we wanted. And here we can control whether your pickaxe is private, unlisted, or public for everybody to use. If we're happy with these, we'll then publish our chat bot. Then you'll be redirected to the control panel for the tool. As your tool gets uses, you'll see it reflected here, and you'll even be able to monitor the inputs and outputs right here. Basically, check up on how your tool is performing. You can control whether you add your own API key and all sorts of great stuff. You can delete it, you can share it with this link, you can edit it at any time. And finally, if, you, if you're happy with it, you can deploy it, either as an embed on your own website or someone else's website, or you can add it to a studio so that you can monetize it through the Pickaxe platform. I hope this was a great high level overview of the Pickaxe Builder. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments or email us at info at Thank you.